happened over these years uh, but we uh, in terms of fiscal revenue uh, it's also a very important source but we've been able to diversify away for example in 2006 2007 copper revenues mining revenues but that's mainly mainly copper accounted for about a third and even more than a third of the overall fiscal revenues now they're slightly over 10 percent and the reason for that is that not only that the prices have come down but also that the costs of production have increased. How concerned are you about a slowdown in China's economic growth? Demand will, it's a very unlikely that it will decrease, but you will have, you know, slower increases, increases in demand that you had in the past. And uh, we already s uh, felt the effects of a deceleration in China. How? Through the copper price. Copper prices were over $4.00. You know, a couple of years ago, the average, the annual price was $4 in 2011. Uh, then last year, it was about 360. Now the price is, uh, the, cur the spot price is about 325. So we have seen a deceleration in the copper price, a, a, a reduction in copper prices, as we have seen uh, uh, that China's demand is growing at a slower pace because we have to get used to a China that grows at seven to seven and a half percent, not at nine and a half percent. This is a significant deceleration, but we can live with this. If you had a crystal ball in front of you, where do you see copper prices going in the next perhaps two to three years from now? It's very unlikely that copper prices will go below three, just because production costs have increased so much, you know, in the industry overall, not only in Chile, that, oh, of course, Chile is the main exporter of copper. We have a th about 35 percent of the all the world exports come, you know, uh, uh, on the world production uh, come from Chile. So uh, it's, a, it's a huge staple for us, but um, uh, we're not seeing a debacle in copper prices. It's just, I mean, if I would be in the copper industry and I would make a projection, I would make sure that a $3 is profitable. According to the United Nations, Chile attracted $30 billion in direct foreign investment last year. What is the government doing to perhaps attract more foreign investors there are many areas attracting foreign direct investment. How do we do it? Well, first thing is, and I think there's a basic principle, we treat foreign investors just like national investors. We don't discriminate against the foreign investor. The principle of non-discrimination against foreign investors uh, is set into our legal system since um, at least for four decades. 
So there's less red tape and, and less hurdles for foreign investors to overcome? Yeah, and not differential. I mean, what you have to do, you, could, you have to do if you're a foreign investor or if you're a national investor. We don't say, oh, you're a foreign investor, then you should comply with all this. And if you're a local investor, then, then, then you have the hurdles at, at a much lower uh, uh, you know, level. I think that would be, that's a mistake. Mm -hmm.